Hello everyone, Argolfump here with the grand finale of Miss Clue, Crew's Most Deadly. This is chapter number 15. At the end of the previous chapter, we were about to go flying in this plane so we could drop dream gas on top of those evil smuggler pirates. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Woo! Flying! The sky and sea are quite breathtaking from up here. It never gets old. Once we have this difficult task behind us and are once again safe, we have to do this again. You know it. We'll be there before you know it. I hope the dream gas works. I'm sure it will. From what you described, there's no reason it should fail. There they are. We're ready to make our first pass now. I'll have the dream gas ready. Better get your window open. It's time. Alrighty, so I believe uh, the dream gas is over here on this side of my inventory. And what happened there was that I just took out all these various bottles of dream gas. Cool. Okay, so now you just need to click on the window. Uh, click on the window twice to start the end game challenge. So as soon as we see some smugglers, we, we take out the dream gas and then we drop it on top of them. This is actually a very simple challenge. There's one. There's one. And your your cursor will turn red uh, when you can click to attack a smuggler. Great aim, Jane. We're coming around for another pass now. This is nerve-wracking. Ready. So we're gonna have to do this four times in a row. You get two smugglers on each pass. Okay, I don't see anyone here. Here, here's one. There. Dream gas is nowhere near that particular smuggler when it lands, but the game says it worked anyway. Hooray! You're doing great. We're coming around for another pass now. Woo! Another pass complete. Ready. I wonder how Evelyn and your dad are doing. If I know Dad, he's got rope and is waiting to finish off the smugglers as soon as we make our last pass. He is always so prepared. I'm sure you're right. Yeah, so every time uh, we make a pass, we have to start over from the beginning again. And that gets kind of boring here on our third pass because we have to wait like half a minute before we even get close enough to any smugglers to attack. Oh well. We're coming around for another pass now. Ready. Okay, final pass, everybody. Final pass. Like I said, this is the end game challenge. We've got a little bit to do after this. Uh, mostly we'll just get back to the other side of the island and meet up with the Berkeleys. Also, we're gonna have a crazy fight scene with Ron and uh, the smuggler captain. And of course, Jane is going to flirt with Ron some more because, hey, why not? that way to me too. All that's left is for Dad and Evelyn to tie them up. Right you are. Let's hope the smugglers don't smell too bad. Good point. They should have plenty of time to air out on the beach before they come to. Let's go land so we can get over there and help out just in case we're needed. On our way. Alright, so now the plane is landing. Why don't we just land the plane on the beach where Evelyn is? Wouldn't that make more sense? I guess maybe there's not enough room to land on that A beach. Perfect three 
really are a good pilot. Lots of practice carrying the mail, and I haven't lost a package yet. Wow, this package is impressed. <sighs> Jane, First just, just make out with him already. We don't want to come back over to this side of the island and see the plane flipped over by the wind. Without a doubt. There's tie-down anchors right behind your seat. If you'll grab one and take care of this wing, I'll take care of the other one. Okay. I got it. Just screw it into the ground below the tie-down loop on the wing. Will do. Then take a piece of rope and tie the wing to the anchor using bowline knots. I definitely know how to tie a bowline. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, just click on that several times. And we did the bowline stuff earlier during the repelling challenge. Let's see, I think it's... Oh gosh, what is it? Under, over, under, over, under. Okay, and we have to do this twice. Under, over, under, over, under. All done. All set here. Then let's get going. I really want to check on Evelyn and your dad and see what's happening. I totally agree. Okay, over here. We've done this lots of times. You pull the bottom one, and then you pull the top one. Then you uh, get in the side. Ready? Ready when you are. I like, I like how there's a lot of room in front of Jane, so clearly she's just shoved uh, Ron to the back of this little carriage car. Shoved herself as close to him as possible. Yeah, that Jane, you've got to keep your eye on her. She, she's sort of a super flirt. Okay, so why did the car just suddenly slow down? I mean, yeah, it's coming close to the exit, but it was going pretty fast there. What happened to the momentum? Do physics work like that? I don't know. Anyway. Let's get going. Right behind you. Keep a close eye out in case any of the pirates got off the beach and are hiding in the caves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One pirate escaped. The leader of the pirates. So, time Jane, for... look out. Time for some action. Oh, that was amazing. Aw, oh, they're dancing together. You made quick work of him. I don't think he's going to be the captain of any more boats for a while. All in a day's work, ma'am. I hope he's the only one that escaped. Not exactly the type to go down with his ship. Well, on to the beach. <laughs> no, seriously, it looked like they were dancing, not what fighting. <laughs> From the uniform he's wearing, I'd say he's with the Navy. Let's find out. Hmm, yes, who is this mysterious stranger? Captain McLeod, this is my son Ron, and the daughter of a close family friend, Miss Jane Darcy. Captain McLeod, my son Ron Berkeley. Good to meet you, Captain McLeod. Good to meet you as well. Miss Jane Darcy, may I present Captain McLeod of the HMS Renown. Captain McLeod, may I present Miss Jane Darcy of Pemberley. I believe I am acquainted with your father, Miss Darcy. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I have heard my father speak of you, and the pleasure is mine. Mr. Berkeley informs me you were the one who targeted these smugglers with gas, rendering them incapacitated. It was really Ron's skill in the air that made it possible. It appears that all of you deserve a great deal of credit in the capture of these smugglers. We have been after them for quite a while. How did you discover our plight? I didn't think my message on the radio got through. Such are the vagaries of wireless. Your message was picked up by one of our shore stations in Australia, and then eventually relayed to our ship, which was in the immediate vicinity. We are indeed fortunate. After receiving the message, we made flank speed and arrived offshore shortly after your bombing run. While you and Ron were landing the plane, we came ashore in landing boats and assisted Mr. Berkeley and his daughter Evelyn by taking the smugglers into custody. They are now safely in the brig on the Renown. Well, I guess it's good that these guys showed up eventually to help. 
We have one more smuggler for you. It seems the captain managed to evade the gas and make his way into the caves. When we were returning from landing the plane, we encountered the captain in the cave you see behind us, and Ron made short work of him. Congratulations, Mr. Berkeley. You look like a young man who could take care of himself. Thank you very much, Captain McLeod. I believe your men will find the head of the smugglers trussed up and ready to be taken on board at your convenience. You may leave that to us. Additionally, the smugglers have used the cave to store much of the cargo they have taken. I have a map of the caves here, which should make finding and removing the cargo a simple process. Let me give them to you. Thank you, Miss Darcy. This will make our task an easy one. You are very welcome. You are very welcome. One additional item. While stranded here, two of the smugglers came ashore, and I overheard them discussing attacking a ship loaded with dory bars before returning here. I believe if you investigate the smugglers' wrecked ship, you will find that cargo of dory bars still there. This is indeed excellent news, as many people depend on the income from dory bars for their livelihood. The loss of them would have been a significant burden for many families and businesses. We will have cargo ships here under our direction for some weeks, sorting out all the goods the smugglers have cached on this island, and of course, performing the salvage from their wrecked ship. I'm so pleased I have been able to assist in the capture of the smugglers. From what Mr. Berkeley has already told me, it appears that your daring and forethought have been more than a little instrumental in this happy outcome. Now, as to the next order of business, I need to inform you that a tropical cyclone is forming that should pass to the south of this island by no later than tomorrow morning. So if you could, with some haste, gather up your belongings, we can take you on board and back to civilization. I love how Jane is getting so much credit for stopping the smugglers, when really she was like here for a week playing with her koala bear the entire time. And she she really did not too much to stop these smugglers. And I like how Mr. Berkeley is just standing here for this whole conversation, just staring at me, not saying anything, just staring. Do you know if the storm surge will be significant as it passes this island? Indeed, I should think it should be significant. Oh, well, that's good to know. I know it would involve some risk, and would be up to you and Mr. Berkeley, but the Wanderer was not damaged when stranded ashore during the last storm, and with any luck, we might be able to ride the storm surge out and save the Wanderer from becoming a derelict and possibly a hazard in the shipping lanes. That would be a daring endeavor. What do you think of it, Mr. Berkeley? The Wanderer is almost new and has already proven to be a fine ship. If there is a reasonable chance of salvaging her, I would like to make the effort. I probably shouldn't permit this, but as you have all shown yourselves so resourceful in the capture of the smugglers, if you have the heart for it, I will hold just out to the storm's path and remain prepared for rescue operations if necessary. That is more than we could ask for. We'll get to it, man. You have lots to do. You are more than gracious. Let's go. It has certainly been a long day. Yes, it's hard to believe it was just early this morning that the smugglers were captured. The important thing is that we have the Wanderer ready to move out with the storm surge. As soon as Ron and your dad finish making their final check on the engine, I'm sure they're going to be expecting something for supper. You're right. We need to get busy on that. Yeah, you know what? They can make their own food, okay? Yeah, I I I'm busy here. I just stopped some smugglers, okay? And yes, congratulations, everybody. We are saving this wrecked boat. Hooray! It's not destroyed. We're going to save it. Before we do, I still have one question. I kept finding checker pieces in the cave. Did you and your dad have anything to do with that? We did. When we were taken by the smugglers, I grabbed some of the checkers, thinking they might come in handy. You might call it my Hansel and Gretel moment. So while we were held captive, I would periodically try rolling one of the checkers down a shaft. I wasn't sure where the shaft led, but as we were rather desperate, I was hoping the checkers would end up somewhere they might be found. Yeah, you really should have sent something besides checkers. Like, I don't, I don't know, a note that says, Please help me, I'm captured. Indeed, I found them on the floor of the main cave, and they had me puzzled. But now that I know the story, they will be all the more special to me. Me too, and our checker games will be even more fun because of it. <laughs> yeah, it will remind me of the time I was kidnapped. It'll be great. Yay! The Wanderers refloated. This will be our last meal ashore for several weeks. We should make the most of it. How about we get a fire started on the beach and cook up some of the steaks I saw in the cold storage? Excellent idea. I can't imagine what Ron and Dad would like better. Let's get busy collecting things and make this a meal we can remember. Jane and Evelyn, that was fabulous. You can cook for me anytime. 
Uh, sure. Oh, the koala bear is here. Oh, that's so cute. And why did Evelyn change her clothes? And wh what is Mr. Berkeley doing here with all those hot dogs? You're just saying that because you've been stranded on an island for three weeks and have had to eat your own cooking. Not at all. I agree with Ron. You two have prepared a variable feast for us with only what was available in our ship's stores. You are just flattering us so that we will keep feeding you for the rest of the trip. There may be some truth to that, but this was a meal to remember. I know you can't be hungry, Dad. So why are you roasting hot dogs? I was thinking about our next few weeks and thought it would be great if we had some hot dogs cooked over the fire that you could warm up and we could remember this wonderful evening. You're such a sentimentalist, Dad. It looks like the storm and surge is starting. Jane, you should go below and get your foul weather gear on. Great idea. I'm starting to get wet already. Everything looks good. But of course, we have some last minute preparations to take care of. Just remember, anything we want to have when the storm passes must be secured. Jay, while you are making things secure below, could you make one last check and make sure the ports and windows are closed? No problem. I'll check the ports. Okay, well, looks like we're now reenacting the start of the game for some reason. Anyway, I remember this puzzle. All you have to do is look at the windows. That one's closed. Mm-hmm, and, uh, they're already closed, I believe. Another one shut. It's closed. Cool. Okay, so now let's get Jane's, uh, special weather gear. Is underneath her bed, as I recall. Somehow this all seems so familiar. Well, time to get back on deck. Okay, well... Last time, uh, Jane got hit on the head and fell underneath her bed and smugglers attacked, but this time she puts on her rain gear and goes outside. And the ship makes it away from the island! Yay! Since I last wrote you about our return to civilization after having a wonderful cruise and a chance to have some unscheduled alone time on the island, we now had the opportunity to spend some time in Australia and take care of unfinished business. One of the first things we did was visit the Gold Coast Sanctuary and reinstate Yakapu to his normal status of star. It turns out Yakapu was part of a group of animals that were going on a tour to raise awareness for the importance of sanctuaries. The smugglers had intercepted the ship Yakapu was on and then dumped the cargo on their island. The sanctuary has sent a recovery team to the island to remove the other animals, one of which I am glad to say will be a rather large articulated python. I already miss Yakapu as we had become such good friends, but I know I can always visit him. One consolation is I believe he has now found a cute girl koala so I may get to meet a whole family of Yakapus the next time I come to the sanctuary. As I mentioned in my last letter, after we refloated the Wanderer, we sailed around to the other side of the island and dropped Ron off. He then flew his plane back to Australia to meet us here. The great news is that Ron now has his new plane, which makes it possible for him to both haul more mail with each trip and have far fewer fuel stops on any particular route. He is really excited and is already planning to get another plane and hire someone to fly it. It looks like he's going to make a great success with his mail business. Mr. Berkeley is planning an expedition to recover the Star of Samar, and I believe Evelyn has convinced him that she should get to go along. She is so excited. And now for the most amazing news. It turns out that both Australia and New Zealand have been trying to apprehend Captain Horatio and his band of smugglers for some time. In addition, the Gold Mile Mines Group were extremely appreciative to have not lost their cargo of dory bars. The Royal Navy has been amazingly efficient at repatriating all of the stolen cargo that the smugglers had stored on their island to the rightful owners. As reward for our part in bringing down the smuggling gang, his Majesty has decided to award title to our island jointly to the Berkeley and Darcy families. So our next task 
is to decide on a name for our island so that it can be properly labeled on all the maritime charts. We have to plan on a time when you and Rag can come and we can have a special vacation there. I would so love showing you both around. Because of all the notoriety surrounding this, Papa wrote to say that he sees more of me in the newspapers than at home. I suppose this means I should make sure to set out for Pemberley as soon as I can. Love, Jane. She owns the island now. She owns the island. Wow, what is she going to call it? She's going to call it Magical Lovey Island. And coming next month is Miss Clue number five, Trials of Salem. So that's it for my video walkthrough. I hope you enjoyed watching me play Miss Clue, Cruise Most Deadly. See you in October, everybody.